The timpani selection this year is Etude Number no. 11 from the book Studies in Copper. This etude challenges performers with rapid motions around the drums, a wide range of dynamics, mixed meters, three tuning changes, and more. So when we think about the sound quality and stroke types, you want to develop a strong foundation of these stroke types to play with great sounds at all dynamics. To achieve a full tone at louder dynamics, you want to avoid playing downstrokes. When you grip the mallets too much pressure and play with a harsh downstroke, you're gonna get a harsh sound. Work on allowing the mallets to rebound off the head or have quick upstrokes to get the mallet heads off of the drum heads as quickly as possible. This will create a full tone out of each drum. So let me demonstrate a little bit of the beginning with good and then bad sounds. Then here's bad sounds with some harsh downstrokes. You'll see and hear a very clear difference. When playing the softer and faster passages in measures 59 to 68, I recommend keep the hands low to the drums and shift really quickly for those sextuplets. You'll notice I also play a double at the end of uh, measure 59 to allow the left hand to come over to that C again for sound quality and motion. I actually chose a little slightly harder mallet for this section and I keep that mallet for the last section to allow the mallets to do the work for me and assist me with clear articulations. For rhythms, generally the rhythms aren't overly complicated for this etude. So because of this, rhythmic interpretation and a steady pulse will be extremely important. There should be a very clear difference between the 16th, the triplets, and the 16th triplet passages. To accomplish this, I recommend developing your inner pulse through various metronome games. Programming a preset with the meter changes will help you feel, hear, count, and maintain a steady pulse using the Tonal Energy app. And then you can also play with just a regular metronome. So in the first half of the etude, put the metronome on just the upbeats. You would then need to restart the metronome in measure 51 because it gets off just a little bit, it gets off of a half a beat. Another metronome game, put the met on the half note, either beat one and three, or two and four. So basically the concept is, when you have more space between the clicks of the metronome, this helps you develop your internal sense of pulse. I would also suggest playing all the rhythms with correct stickings on one drum or play them on a practice pad to ensure proper timing before moving around the drums. Let's talk about stickings, especially in measures 59 to 68. There are times where you need to play double strokes. This will allow you to keep the hands and the mallets low to the drums, again, while also setting yourself up for smooth preparatory motions to make sure you're moving from one drum to the next. And the double strokes allows you to prepare that next hand for where it needs to play. With double strokes, the primary aspect to consider is to ensure you are still playing in consistent playing areas and are achieving a consistent sound on all the drums. We talk about sound quality, so incredibly important. Use your ears when you start to play those doubles. Focus on the heights so each double stroke is even and clear and again, consistent. Use video and audio analysis to provide instant feedback to help you make any needed adjustments. So when we look at one little spot, measure 62 to 63, this is where we're gonna use some double strokes. So pardon the uh, wrong pitches, but this is kind of what we're gonna be thinking about. To set, we're gonna do a double on the top two drums to set me up for that uh, beat three, and then 
And then we play the doubles at the end of measure 63 to allow our hands to flow and again to get a good consistent sound. Several other sections use those double strokes, whether in this section, measures 40, 41, 42. I also play some double strokes again to prepare my hands to go from one drum to the next with smooth motions. A good way to practice these motions is to work your hands separately. This allows you to focus on the breakdown of these specific motions around the drums. So for dampening, since most of this piece goes by really quickly and there's not really a whole lot of rest, there are really only a few places that allow dampening to occur. For this piece and really every timpani solo or band part or percussion ensemble piece you play, I suggest dampening in parts to bring out the phrases and add clarity to rhythms and important lines. Specifically for this etude, I chose to dampen the rest in measures 29 through 30, also in measure 45 to bring clarity to the decrescendo, and at the end to bring clarity to the primary note of D that I actually muffle the G right when I play that last note. I also dampen drums on exact beats right before tuning changes. Technically, work to have your hand dampen the drum in the playing area and not make any noise. So sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to do that. You might hear a little bit, but just continue to strive for that. I use the padding of the back three fingers and sometimes my thumb to cancel out the sound. So when t a couple things that you can be aware of when dampening. Make sure that after you dampen out a drum, that you bring the stick back to the correct playing position. Especially when we play the triplets in measures 29 and 30, I play the three notes, bum, 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 and then I let that stick rebound, and then I dampen, something like this. Again, I'm thinking about the three notes of the triplet to have a great sound, and then I reset my hand very quickly to dampen that note out. So don't let the mallet head end up too close to the center of the head either. So you want to make sure your playing area is always consistent. So when we're thinking about dampening, always thinking about the sound right before you dampen. So you always strive for full, rich sounds on every stroke. With tuning changes, there's three tuning changes in this etude. And so with all of these timpani tuning changes, I'm very meticulous about the beats that I change the pitches. For this etude, I start every tuning change on beat one and arrive at the new pitch on beat three. This allows my work with all of the halftime metronome games on one and three or two and four to develop my internal sense of pulse to then make these tuning changes in time and in tempo. I also work out the order of the drum tunings to help set up the next entrance or start tuning the drum I just finished playing. I do everything in a very specific order to make sure that I have that consistency from practice session to practice session that will then help me in the performance. Also, I mark my music. Absolutely. Mark your music with the stickings. Mark your music with the tuning changes. So you, again, you can practice this consistency. For mallet choice, as you noticed in my videos, I actually changed mallets in measures 51 to 58. I did this to use a slightly more articulate mallet for the last two sections of the piece. These two sections require a little more articulation at the softer dynamic, so using this harder mallet allows the mallets to, again, to do more of the work for me without sounding too harsh. So I chose the innovative percussion models. The, for the first two sections, I used the BT6 model. And then for the last two sections, I used the JMG5 model. These allow me to get a great sound on the drums and allow, again, allow the mallets to do more of the work for you. Enjoy this piece, practice hard, mark your parts, record yourself, and think about having consistency and above all else, have great sounds around the drums. Good luck and have fun.